Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video on my last one which talked about the slower charging rates of the Kona Electric and probably, possibly the e-Nero as well. When you're charging from cold at a rapid charger and your state of charge when you start is around 50-60%. Initially when I've experienced that, my thoughts are around there must be something wrong. It, it feels wrong because what we're expecting is more. We're expecting not what the manufacturers are telling us, but we're expecting because it's got a thermal battery management system with liquid cooling and heating, you're expecting it to manage the temperature uh, while it's charging so that you get the optimum charge rate. But that doesn't seem to be happening. Um, you also expect, um, maybe foolishly, um, that some of the charge rates are going to be proportional. Maybe not precisely, but you don't expect them to be very, very different. So as a new electric car owner, what I'm experiencing isn't quite what I was expecting from the car. And that's what I'm trying to share. I'm not trying to share what's right or wrong or what the facts are and those sort of things because I don't know the facts. You know, We're not being told. The information isn't out there um, to tell us the parameters of the battery management system or even the chemical makeup of the batteries that are used, all, all those sort of things. So you know, we can only guess and we can only surmise. And I'd just like to say from all the comments received, and there have been a lot, they've probably helped me get a better appreciation for what's going on because I don't necessarily think one comment is right and another is wrong. But when you add them all together, you, you learn quite a lot. And partly I'm learning that half the people that are responding think that um, electric car batteries are like that and that's what you should expect. Others think there's a potential problem or a potential issue there because they weren't expecting it. Now, what I probably think is some of those people that say that's how electric cars are have got experience of electric cars but not necessarily of that battery technology. So there's an issue there that isn't there, that our preconceived expectations for an electric car may not be true. Now you might have preconceived ideas about how a new electric car is gonna be based on either what you're being told by the manufacturer and the marketing information and the spiel that uh, you read about the car, or it might be based on your experience of an electric car that you have already. In which case, is it, is it valid? Is it relevant? Because somebody that owns a Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour, the battery technology would be very different to what's in the Kona. So maybe its properties and its chemical makeup react differently to heat and cold and charging temperatures. So the parameters for the window of charging to get the maximum charge rate might be different. And that seems to be a big difference, doesn't it? If you look at um, the Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour with rapid gate, then it seems to be heat is the nemesis of that car. It doesn't like heat. Well, the cone is completely different. From my expectation, you need to warm it up and get it hot. And the more journeys you can do and the more miles you do, the better and the better charge rates you get. Um, it seems to be very hard to get the car hot. So maybe the car's just really good at keeping the battery cool. But you know, the characteristics are different. The Kona likes it hot. The Leaf seems to not like it hot. Um, so what should you expect? Should you have a reasonable expectation of the electric car you're about to buy based on past experience, based on the information available? Or do you have to do lots and lots of research? And the problem is the more research you do, especially online, what's the truth? Because, for example, if you looked at my video, um, many people have commented on that video based on charging, saying there isn't a problem, but they're not listening specifically to the charge rates and the state of charge that I'm talking about. So they're referring to other parameters, either in hotter countries or they've driven further and the batteries got hotter. So you're not quite comparing like for like. So what's, what's the point to this video? Well, the point to it is I wanted to share some information on something I'm considering and something I want to share with you. Have you seen, for example, that the new Ionic that's coming out this year in the UK in the summer, uh, there's been a leak of some description that the battery size is going to be 38 kilowatt hours. So if that's the case, it's not quite the Kona Electrics 39.2. It's not exactly the same battery. But then again, it wouldn't be, would it? Because the battery pack size in the Kona won't fit in the Ionic. The Ionic platform is very, very different. And therefore, the packaging of the battery has to be different as to where the placement of the batteries go. So maybe the same cells are being used and they're being linked in series and in parallel differently to produce um, the maximum range that they can from the 38 kilowatt hours. But here's the question. Should an Ionic owner currently think about buying an Ionic 2, let's call it, the second version that comes out in the summer, and expect it to have similar characteristics to the first car? 
Well, if it's different battery chemistry technology and the battery management system is different, then perhaps it won't. Will the battery be running at the same voltage level? For example, the Ionic, I believe at the moment, runs at 360 volts. The Kona Electric in 64 kilowatt hour runs at 356 volts. Both of those achieve fast rapid charging speeds of around 220, 230 miles an hour. So that's how many miles can you add to the car's range in an hour. The Kona 39 kilowatt hour achieves a miles per hour figure for fast rapid charging of only 130 miles an hour. And that was borne out in the test that I did in the comparison between the 39 kilowatt hour and the 64 kilowatt hour. So because the 39 kilowatt hour runs at a lower voltage, 326 volts, is that the reason why the charge rates achieved um, are less? Is that one of the reasons? So what if the new Ionic has the new battery cell chemistry that's in the Kona currently, so it has slightly different characteristics? And what if it runs at a different voltage? What will the charge rates be? I don't know. I don't know what voltage and what charging capabilities the new Ionic's gonna have, but that would be my concern about potentially buying a new Ionic and thinking, oh, it's gonna be 200 plus miles range, that's brilliant. But are you gonna lose some of the fast charging capabilities of the Ionic? Because the Ionic at the moment, in the first version, is good at both. It's really, really efficient. Um, it makes really, really good use of the 28 kilowatt hour battery that it has and gets incredible range of, what, 150, 160 miles in the UK in summer weather, 130, 130, 35 maybe in winter conditions, something like that, maybe, maybe as low as 120, um, even with the heater on. That's what I've seen from customers reporting on what the real world experience is in the Ionic at the moment. So if we go up to a 38 kilowatt hour battery, adding 10 more kilowatt hours, we can expect what, four and a half to five miles per kilowatt hour. So adding 10 to that, you're adding 50 miles. So in summer, 200, 210 miles should be absolutely fine. Um, and in winter, we're talking 170, 180, maybe 190 miles. So if it's like for like, so that's on efficiency. So if the efficiency and the drag is the same and the motor is the same and all those sort of things, then it should be around those numbers. But can we compare like for like? Can we, like I was thinking about charging the Kona proportionately um, at different charge rates, can we presume that that will be true? Will the fast charging capability of the Ionic be even better? Will it be um, able to accept 100 kilowatts uh, charging rather than just the 70? Uh, now, we don't know. So here, here's my thought about it all, that what I'm searching for is the truth. And I find it really frustrating that we have to go and do tests. We have to submit lots of information from lots of people charging to find out what happens in different circumstances. You know, at what temperature does the um, battery management system heat the battery or not? And it's not in the manual. You know, in the winter mode video that I did, I've reported it's minus 10, which Hyundai have told me. But what about the issue about slowing down the charge when the state of charge is around 50 or 60%? What's the temperature threshold for when it does that or when it doesn't do that? And why can't we know that? Because what's the point to us going out to a rapid charger when the temperature of the car might be 13, 14 degrees and expecting to get a decent charge rate when the truth might be it won't get the good charge rate unless it's 19, 20, 21 degrees. You know, we don't know. So unless we know how close we are to the threshold, how do we know whether we're going to get the right rate in charging? We can't plan properly. And I find that so frustrating. If you take that back to the consideration about the Ionic, let's imagine that the Ionic has worse charging because it goes more similarly to the Kona 39 kilowatt hour. So it has the range, but it doesn't have the same fast charging. Well, in that case, is it the car for you? Because with only 200 miles of range, not 300, you can drive, say, 100 miles, and then you'd consider charging and coming back again. But at a rapid charger, 100 miles used, you'd be at 50%. You might get that slow rate of charge. So you're going to have to wait a lot longer <laughs> at the charger. We're in the old cone, uh, sorry, the old Ionic you probably only have to wait half an hour to get your charge to get back again. We're in the new Ionic, you might have to wait up to an hour. Is, is that what to expect or is it not? You know, what I would like to see from manufacturers is more information showing us the truth. Now, I know the Ionic 2 isn't out yet and the specs aren't out yet, so you, know, you can't expect to have that information. 
But it's a good example because it's in the Hyundai scheme of things, people that have got an Ionic at the moment will probably consider upgrading to um, the new Ionic. It's something that may well happen, but how are we supposed to do that when we don't have enough information? It really was bad enough with uh, buying the Kona that I did with no information on price or specs or anything really. You had, to, you had to trust a lot that it really would do what the initial information said it said it would. Um, luckily, it does for me. There are a few quirks here and there, but other than that, it really does deliver. So what I'd like to see, and I think I've said it now a few times, is more accurate information. I don't understand why it's being hidden, because if you hide the information and don't tell customers specifically how the systems work, we have to guess, or we have to add 2 and 2 and make 22, and come up with theories like I have that maybe it's to do with how long the charge takes, and it's nothing to do with charge rates and battery temperatures at all. It, you know, what is the truth and why can't you tell us? Because if you don't tell us, we'll guess and get it wrong. Uh, we'll end up getting lots of information from lots of tests and perhaps um, come to the wrong conclusion, which won't necessarily do your brand or the car any good at all in its marketing. If it's good, share with us that it's good. If there's a weakness to it, tell us about it and then we can avoid it and we won't see it as a weakness anymore because we'll already know how to avoid it. It's... I don't, I don't know. It's, it's frustrating, isn't it, that uh, we can't just get to the truth and... Is that just how it is with electric cars because they're new and nobody wants their information to be out there in the public domain yet? You know, apart from Tesla, that is. Um, I'm really not sure, but it is frustrating because it makes a purchasing decision of a car very difficult when it's like the Kona or the e Nero or the new Ionic because nobody's out there driving them and you can't get enough information on the tests that are relevant to you because everyone's journeys are different. For me, that 100 mile journey and 100 mile back, that's a really important one to me. So that might not be to other people, it might be 200 miles. But whatever that important journey is, you want to know how the charging will affect you. But can, can you believe how specific you have to be in your consideration as to whether the electric car is relevant to you? Because it's not particularly flexible. Um, you know, you're not supposed to leave it on low charges, you're not supposed to leave it on high charges. It's not good to be charging on a rapid charger from mid states of charge, so it seems. Um, Depending on what you hear, maybe it's 15 degrees is a good temperature for the battery. Maybe it's 20, 21 degrees before you get the right charge rates. So depending on where you live and how cold you live, you might not get very good rapid charging rates at all. So anyway, enough on the past video. Um, the information that I'm seeing on the new Ionic so far does look really nice. The interior looks very similar in its design, but the dash is getting an upgrade, a potential optional purchase of a 10-inch display, but that display is being raised up uh, away from the dash in the same way that the Kona is and you know I think that looks nice you know if we do get the option in the UK of the 10 inch display that does look really really nice and uh, the visibility is better so even though they might cut out some things like you know the memory function on the electric seats um, and who knows what else they might cut out to keep the price down because the price is obviously going up by having more battery capacity in the car um, I hope they get to keep the price lower than where the Kona is. Um, I hope they don't do what Nissan have now done, relaunch the Leaf and bump the price up. Because if they relaunch the Ionic and put the price up so that it's what more expensive than a 39 kilowatt hour Kona, uh, something won't feel right with that. So um, I hope they keep the price below 30,000 UK pounds. And that should make it attractive for people that are really keen to have efficiency over a long range. Anyway, I thought I'd explain myself a little bit more now that a few days have gone on since I posted the last video about the charging rates with the Kona and also talk a little bit about the Ionic. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it makes sense. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Um, I am not an engineer. I am not a battery chemist. I do not understand all of these things, but I'm learning quickly. I'm trying to present a layman's view of what you experience having bought a car and not necessarily understanding it initially and what it feels like. It feels really frustrating when you encounter something that doesn't feel right. It feels like a problem. And then you either have to learn that it's a fault with the car or uh, a fix that needs to be done because it's uh, something they can improve or hopefully not. <laughs> There's nothing they can do about it. That's how the battery works. That's how the chemistry works. That's the limitation of the car because that's the worst case scenario. If we have to just suck it up and uh, live with it, 
then that's the worst case because that basically means we didn't know about that weakness and limitation when we bought the car and that's where I think transparency really needs to come from we shouldn't have disappointment on finding things that we don't like about it in the technology just because they haven't shared enough information up front I hope I haven't put anyone off from ordering a Kona or the new Ionic that's coming up uh, fingers crossed that the fast charging rates actually get improved on the new Ionic I'm only considering what might be. I have no idea whether it will or it won't. I don't have any details. So please don't think that the Ionic is going to charge slower just because I've said that as an example of what might be. Uh, I really don't know. It could be faster. It could be exactly the same. It could be slower. We're yet to find out. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you did enjoy this. Take care for now and see you again soon. Bye-bye.